Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this Unreal Engine VR mod setup guide. Now in today's video I want to show you how easy it can be to take a non-VR game, a flat game on Steam, and turn it into a VR game with 60OF motion controls within like 60 seconds. It's a very simple process when you understand the basics of UEVR, when you've done a little bit of self-learning, maybe you've watched some guides, and you've learned the basic foundational skills that you need to come into this tool and start tinkering with things to get the results that you want. Now to preface this video, I am not the most techie person in the world, but this mod has been built in such a way that it is quite easy to learn. Once you know what to look for, you can, in theory, apply what I'm going to show you today to basically every game. Now you won't always get perfect results, you might not even get working results at all, but as long as you know these fundamental things, you should get some results, or you should at least know where to go to see if it's going to work, and it shouldn't take you long to achieve it. So I guess this video is kind of like a chaser to the Unreal Engine VR first impressions video I made just the other day. That's more of a review video, me talking about what this tool can do, talking about how impressed I've been, its shortcomings, etc, etc. So if you want a general understanding of what this mod does, check out that video. But if you want to know how to do it, this is the right video for you. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open the Unreal Engine VR injector. Here is the application itself. Now I always open it as an administrator. I'm not entirely sure why um, it's recommended that you do that. I assume because this program kind of injects itself literally into other programs, giving it that higher level of permissions stops things from going wrong. It stops it from running into brick walls and makes it run better. I just do it because I do as I'm told and that is how you are supposed to run it or how I was told to run it based on many of the guides I've read. There we go, it is now open. This is the Unreal Engine VR mod. It's a, a small little thing, tiny little window there and that's all you need to do to get going. So that is now open. Leave it open in the background and pick the game you want to play. Now today we're going to play Trepang 2, Trepang 2, which is a, a really good starting point I think because it's already a first person shooter. So we're not going to have to adjust from third person to first person, although I will show you how you can do that. Um, I did it for Crash Bandicoot, um, it's been done in Returnal, it's been done in a ton of games and it is quite easy to do. But if you're learning this tool, it's probably best to start with a first person shooter, especially if you're testing to get six DOF motion controls added into something. It's, it's the best starting block. So we're gonna start with this. It's a really good game. Uh, it's a little bit like Fear. Feels like a spiritual successor to Fear. First Encounter Assault Recon, I think that acronym stands for. So you can go like slow-mo, um, you can cloak yourself, just an over-the-top first-person shooter. So you pick the game you want to play and you launch that game. It's as simple as that. Once the game has loaded, use Alt-Tab to switch back to Unreal Engine VR. So now it's the focus window sitting on top of the game. And from here, you need to find the game or process that you want to inject Unreal Engine VR into by using this drop-down menu. Now, don't panic if you can't immediately see the game that you're trying to inject this into. The games aren't always called the name of the game. So for example, Trepang 2 is called CPPFPS-Win64. Now the executable files are pretty much always called something-Win64-Shipping, but that first bit isn't always the name of the game. So for example, Severed Steel, I think, is thank you, very cool, dash Win64-Shipping. So check to see if the executable of the game is actually called the thing that it's called. Trepang has Trepang 2 in brackets at the end, so it, it makes it kind of idiot-proof. So once you've confirmed that's the game that you want to inject the Unreal Engine VR mod into, give it a little click, and some games will give you this pop-up. Now don't panic, all this means is this particular game, for some reason, has some VR files or VR plugins in its file directory, and you kind of need to just disable them, make it so that the game doesn't read into them in case there's any conflicts. I don't know why this is, Trepang 2 doesn't have VR support, um, but it will have some kind of VR file 
in its file directory. Now, UEVR is very intuitive. If you press OK and then say yes to open the plugins directory, it will literally open the directory of files for Trepang 2 and you can locate those uh, VR files that need to be switched off basically. I can see it straight away, open XR, go into there, Win64, and there we go, we've got an open XR underscore loader DLL. Now all I typically do is change the name of that slightly, so I just write no in capital letters there, another dot, enter. So now the game can't latch onto that file, I've changed its name, it will no longer serve its original purpose, and there will be no conflicts. Not every game does that, but some do. If the game has VR files in its file directory, UEVR will warn you and you can just change the file name of that file. Sometimes it's in a folder called OpenXR, other times it will literally be in a folder called Oculus. You just have to find that DLL, rename it, Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. Once you've done that, literally just hit inject. And just like that, UEVR has injected itself into the game and already you can see I'm moving the menu around when I move my head. So it's time for me to go into VR. So headset on, let's get nice and comfy. Safety first, always wear your wrist straps, kids. That's the best thing to do. And yeah, here we go, I'm now in. I can move my mouse cursor around. I can close and open the UEVR overlay and the game straight away with me doing nothing <laughs> is allowing me to move around freely. The menu stays there. It's not moving with me when I move my head around. I can turn all the way around, look behind me. It's all in 3D. It looks absolutely stunning immediately. The 3D representation that this is giving, just off the bat with no tinkering, is flipping amazing. And the buttons work. So button mapping works without you doing anything. So straight away, I'm using my touch controllers to navigate these menus. I can flick through them. I can look at, you know, uh, video settings. I can, I can check the graphics options. We're on Epic, that's what I wanna be on. Audio input, blah, 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 blah. It all works straight away. Now, I might get into the game and find that something doesn't work, but that's when I can bring up the overlay and I can start to tinker. But I'll, I'll show you that in a mo. Now, most games just work, and, and that's kind of scary when you really think about it. Now, just for the record, before we start playing, this game in particular is a blank slate for me today. I'm not using anyone else's profile. I want to show you how easy it is to set this up when you're going from flat game to VR game and you're doing it all yourself and not piggybacking off of anyone else's profiles or work. Obviously you can do that if there's already a profile, fantastic, but this is an example of what happens if there isn't a profile and you have to build something yourself. So we'll start a brand new game, we're going to go in on normal because I don't want to die and away we go. Right here we go, so we're into the actual game. Now once again let me just stress this, I haven't done anything to the game at this point. I haven't tinkered with any of the UEVR overlay. I've done nothing. I've just injected the mod and loaded the game. That's it. But I can play with my motion controllers, move me around, the buttons are working, the 3D is absolutely gorgeous, and my head is decoupled so I can look around without it pulling my character around. So I can move forward and look that way, I can move back and look that way. I've done nothing at this stage. The mod has done all of this at this point. Now that's that's pretty crazy when you think about it and it goes to show just how clever this mod is, just how incredible this tech is. I've done nothing at this stage and already I would say this could be a very playable VR experience, but we need to do some things. Okay, so we're into the game. It looks pretty damn amazing and it's running fairly well as a playable VR product, but let's take it another step further. We want to build this into a 6DOF motion controlled game. Now the first thing we want to do is open up the overlay. You do that by clicking in both sticks. Bang, there is the overlay. Now make sure show advanced options is toggled on. When you load in for the first time it won't be on, it will be off and you'll just have these options. Click here to turn it on and that gives us these options down the bottom. It gives you more tools to play around with and these ones are key when it comes to creating 6DOF. Now as a rule of thumb I typically recenter my view, uh, I set my standing origin and I set my height 
just I, I don't know if that is necessary but I do it just to make sure the game kind of knows where I am within my physical space and everything is aligned properly before I start making adjustments. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure the camera the first person viewpoint camera is set up to act and behave like a proper VR game. Now to do that you come under U object hook you go to main and we're looking for acknowledged porn yeah, Acknowledged Porn. Now, under Common Objects, you should find it. Here it is, Acknowledged Porn. Now, I don't know the technical side of things, but I think that basically just means the player character. That's the thing that you are moving around the world, the Acknowledged Porn. Now, to make sure the camera, when you're playing in VR, doesn't do anything weird, doesn't move in a way that it shouldn't move, you just need to click Attach Camera to relative. Now you'd use the relative option if it's a first person game already. If it's a third person game that you're trying to turn into a first person game you would use attach camera to. So we click attach camera to relative and we save the state. So now the camera should behave in the right way. It shouldn't skew or do anything weird. It, it basically just makes it feel like a proper first-person VR experience. And it already felt good, but now it should act properly. If you don't do that, you might encounter some weird things where the vision might skew, things might go a little bit odd, it might bend and, and curve in ways that it shouldn't. I do it as a rule of thumb. <gasps> Once again, because I've been told to, and I do as I'm told. Now I need to get to a section in this game where I have a gun because I can't set any 6DOF motion controls until I have a gun. And right now I'm running around with my hands handcuffed so uh, let me just skip to a bit where I have a gun. Oh I think there's enemies coming for me. And uh, yeah there's dudes coming. They're, they're going to try and kill me and I can't even fight back yet. That ain't great. Okay. Let's skip forward to a section where I have a bloody gun, and then we'll do the 6 DOF motion controls. There we go. Nice pistol to set up some 6 DOF motion controls. Now, again, you could play the game just like this. If you wanted to, you can run around, and you can... Oh, I've kicked that man. And you can shoot, uh, and you can do everything just using your touch controllers, and kind of playing it like a just big 3D flat screen game um, where your head is decoupled is still a great experience but for the best experience you're gonna want those 6 DOF motion controls now this is a little bit more complicated but trust me if I've learned this anyone can learn it and once you have learned the basic thought process behind this you should be able to apply it to almost every game that you want to run with the UE VR mod now first things first open up the overlay once again and come back down to U object hook main. Now under acknowledged porn, which we've already established is our player character, it's where we've attached the camera, look for components. Now when you come into it for the first time it will be a list like that, open it up and in here we're looking for skeletal meshes. Now here it becomes a little bit of a trial and error process some of these skeletal meshes will need to be hidden and we need to figure out which ones are which so let's try character mesh zero okay so that's already not visible that's probably my body ah there's another set of hands that have appeared at me let's keep those invisible so it, that's not what we're looking for we're not looking for character mesh zero let's try character mesh one uh make it invisible okay now that looks to be what we're looking for so that has made my in-game arms invisible. Make them invisible, save state, close the overlay, there we go. So now I no longer have the arms, I just have the floating gun. I guess you can see where this is going. <laughs> um, so right now, this is now an even better way to play. No arms in the way anymore, just the gun, I can still move it around, I can still shoot, I can aim, I can do all that. But we want to take it one step further. We want to make it so I can move this gun physically in six degrees of freedom with my right controller or my left controller. It's entirely up to you which hand you bind it to. Now to do that, once again, you open up your overlay. Now from here, you need to do a little bit of uh, investigative work. You need to try and find a skeletal mesh that is related to a gun. It's called something like skeletal mesh component, 
gun or FP gun or gun model, weapon model, something like that. Now in a lot of games you'll find it here at a top level. This isn't one of those games, uh, which is kind of annoying, but you can use logic to figure out where it's going to be. Now, I think it was this one here, Character Mesh 1P, that was my arms. Uh, let's just check. So, yeah, so that's my arms. Now, using logic, you can figure out that the gun is always attached to the arms or attached to the hand. So the gun model probably exists under this mesh somewhere. It's an attachment to this mesh. Now to figure that out, you open up the arm mesh, you come to inheritance, and you're looking for children, attach children. So it's usually just called children or attach children. Now under there, there we go, skeletal mesh component weapon mesh. In theory, that is the gun. Now if I click visible and make it invisible, it should disappear. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that is the gun. Ah, thank God for that. Okay, so from now, we just need to attach that mesh to something. So you can attach it to your left controller, or you can attach it to your right controller. Now, I'm going to attach it to my right controller. So we click attach right. <laughs> Look at that. That is insane. Now, if you want to adjust it, you click adjust, and you can line this blue mesh up with the gun itself. Now, it isn't a perfect science doing this, but you can get it just about right. And when you have got it where it kind of feels right, open the overlay again, click permanent change. So that means that the bullets are going to go off in the right direction, etc. Um, or at least the bullets are going to come from the end of the gun, I think. And save visibility state. So now, we have a gun. <laughs> That is attached to my right controller, 6 DOF, I can move it all around, and now we're cooking. Now we're looking like a proper VR game, right? I'm moving around, I'm moving the gun freely, things are getting pretty crazy. But I do think I need to do one more thing. I think right now, if I shoot there, the bullet's going to come out where the crosshair is. Yeah, it is, I just shot that filing cabinet open. Okay, now once the overlay is open once again, you don't want to go to U object hook this time, you want to go to input. Now on the input screen, you want to find this little drop down here that says input type, and you want to select whichever hand you've attached the gun to. Now for me, that's right controller. We select that, we close out, and now you should be able to see that my crosshair is aligned with my controller instead of it being fixed to my head. And my character's even moving. You can see them moving around when the... <laughs> Look at the shadow. That is so cool. Right, so now when I shoot here, the bullet goes here. If I shoot here, the bullet goes here. If I shoot over there, it goes over there. So now we have a game that was flat five minutes ago, whatever it was. And now it has six degrees of freedom movement. I've attached this gun to my right hand and it's pretty damn impressive. Now the only other thing I'd probably say is worth doing, um, at least it's worth doing for me, is open up your overlay, come into input, and here, if you're using a quest, or quest 3, quest 2, I think quest 2 has it as well, right here you've got D-pad shifting, and as a default it's set to right thumb rest and left joystick. What that means is if I have my thumb sitting here, on this bit of the controller and then I use my left uh, thumbstick, it will work as a D-pad. Now, when I'm playing games, I typically let my right thumb sit there and just naturally it sits there and that activates the D-pad. So what I typically do is change that to left thumb rest and right joystick because I never have my left thumb sitting here because uh, it's always usually on the stick because this is the stick I use to move around, right? And then if you want to use D-pad, you lay a thumb there on the rest and then you use the right stick, and it's a D-pad all of a sudden. So right now it's activating my torch, uh, cannot dual wield, etc, etc. So I can turn torch on or off by activating this D-pad shifting. So, kind of there we have it. Like, I've gone from flat game to VR game in maybe not quite 60 seconds because I'm doing the talking. But if I wasn't talking, if I wasn't recording this video and I was just looking to do what I just did, I could probably get that done in 60 seconds. The longest bit is locating where the gun mesh is, where it sits. But if you remember that 
the theory behind it is the gun is always attached to your in-game hands. Finding the in-game skeletal mesh for your hands and arms is fairly easy. If the gun doesn't sit at that top level, it's probably going to sit as an asset child under the menu of the arms and the hands in-game. If you remember that, you can pretty much figure this out for any game, and it won't always give you the best results, but it will give you pretty great results. Nine times out of ten. Here we go. Time to kill some dudes. Let's cloak. Look at that. I've gone invisible. I'm like the predator. This is amazing. Okay, it's about to run out. Uh, let me just... I'm going to go slow-mo and just shoot everyone. That's probably the best thing to do, right? Here we go. Slow-mo time. Let's shoot people. Oh, he's well dead. Oh, so's he. He's not. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, he survived. He survived. He survived. Ugh. Bloody heck. Oh, my word. This game is very intense. Very, very intense. Where's that man? Where's that man gone? He's up here somewhere. It's Cloak. Let's go invisible. Ah, he's over there. I can see him. I can see him. Hello! <laughs> oh my god. Ah, a shotgun. Okay, is that going to be aligned in the correct way? No. Now, this will sometimes happen. You'll pick up a gun and it won't be aligned correctly. It doesn't feel right at all for me right now. And it's an easy fix. Open the overlay. Come back into main under object hook. Back under acknowledged pawn. Back into components. And just find that weapon skeletal mesh. So it's sat under here, under the character mesh. There it is. Weapon mesh. Attach to right. Fixed already. Look at that. I didn't even have to do anything. Permanent change. Close it. Look at that. And now, that is correct. Now we're ready to blast some people right in their big stupid faces. Slow-mo time! Oh my god. This is insane. This game is <laughs> very, very gory. This is a game for adult people. Bloody hell. Who's over here? Who's over here? What are you doing? Where are you? Hello. <laughs> oh my. This is a very gory game. Okay, if I pick up this little SMG. Okay, so again, that's not aligned correctly. We open it. We're back in here. We attach to right. Permanent change. Save state. I didn't save state before. So that's probably why it uh, changed when I went from shotgun to this. Always save the state. But there we go. So we got a little SMG attached properly. Shotgun attached properly. Switching back between them, look. There we go. So always remember to save state. If you don't do that, it won't um, save what you've done and, and things will go wrong in between uh, picking up guns and, and doing things in the game that might change things. So shoot that. Oh my god. Bloody hell. This is so good. Oh, I shot his grenade. That was cool. He turned into just sludge. Just a big old pile of sludge. That's insane. Um, yeah, so this is the Unreal Engine VR mod. This is how you take a flat game and turn it into a VR game pretty quickly with full six degrees of freedom motion controls. It's, it's an incredibly impressive achievement. I think you'll all agree. Um, and yeah, it might take a little bit of time to learn. But if you follow the basics that I've shown you today, you should be able to do... Pretty much this, what I've done right here, to any first-person game, as a bare minimum. Some games will throw up roadblocks, some games will hide the skeletal meshes, um, and it will just be harder to do for some games. Some games might have easy anti-cheat, so you might have to disable things. It isn't a catch-all solution that will work for everything without fail, but as long as you understand these basics, you should be able to do it for pretty much any game. This is insane. Honestly, this game is crazy. Bloody hell. Whoa. Someone behind me? I think it's someone behind Oh my god. Jesus. Can I have that gun? There we go. Guns are working properly now. I'm just picking them up and not having to um, readjust them. I think it's because I forgot to save state before. Make sure you save state, everyone. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you find it useful and hopefully you can use it as a reference point um, as you start to mod games yourself in the future and, and get these games that you want to play in VR, working in VR. Hopefully I've been a help to you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to clear this room.
and then I'm gonna stop. Oh Jesus! Oh, it's so good. It's so loud. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh my! This is mental. This is mental. Absolutely mental. Give me that shotgun. What's that bing bong noise? Is it the elevator? Are they going to come? Oh! <laughs> Insane. This has been Trepang 2. Check it out. One of the coolest games I've seen so far with the UEVR mod. And this is how you make a flat game into a VR game with the UEVR mod. Stop making noises. In, you know, 60 seconds once you've understood it and without all my talking and waffling. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon for another one. Peace out. <laughs> I can wave. Bye.